As you listen to today's episode, the one thing that I want you to keep in mind is that you have to be careful with the people involved in make money online opportunities. Some of them are perfectly ethical, legitimate, exactly what they appear, and you can have a really good experience. Some of them are flat out con men. They are not what they appear to be at all. And even experienced businessmen can be fooled by people like this. Today's episode is right along those lines. And unfortunately, the experienced, successful businessman that got fooled was me. But even worse, sometimes things can escalate and become criminal. Now, I've made some bad business decisions. And one of them was choosing to trust somebody who I thought at the time was an Amazon millionaire by the name of Justin Legere. And I'm a big boy. I can usually take my lumps and move on. But what I went through with Justin was nothing short of a nightmare. And I wasn't going to talk about this. I was just going to take my lumps and move on. But something happened. Something happened that I think people need to hear about. So not too much talk about how to make money online in this episode. I'm going to get back to that really soon. But tonight is about exposing a little bit more about what you need to avoid in the world of making money online. And it's truly my hope that you're going to have some takeaways today that will help you, give you a little bit more protection, make you ask some additional questions before giving large sums of money to people promising they've got your best interests at heart. Now, I want to play part of a phone call for you. The sound quality is really poor. Apologies for that. But here is not so finest moment. I present to you, Mr. Justin Lejari. For you to decide, listen to this, and for you to decide, did he threaten to kill this person he's speaking with or not? Here we go. Take a, take a listen. It's fast and it's short. Then we'll talk about it. Hmm, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure he threatened to kill that guy. Let's get started. Learn to make money online the right way. You're listening to the Create Profits Online Podcast with the dude that puts more glide in your stride, more pep in your step. And if you don't dig this mess, you got the wrong damn address. From the back of the shack, getting down to the nitty gritty in the big city. Here's your host, Todd Snively, and he's looking damn pretty. Let's go. Yes, yes, indeed. Let's go. Let's go and talk a little bit more about Mr. Justin Legere. And I'm going to start with how I actually met him and ended up giving him somewhere north of a quarter of a million dollars, how that went. <laughs> Well, I met uh, I met Justin. He was a speaker at an event being held down in Mexico. It was a uh, an Illuminati mastermind being presented by Helium Ten, and they had they had a whole bunch of speakers down there. And I remember actually meeting with the organizers of the event ahead of time, and I was trying to decide if it was going to be worth my while to come down, because I'd heard most of these speakers before. You know, Mexico's a long way. This was, I think you flew into Cancun, and then they uh, had buses taking you to, I can't even remember the name of the place. It wasn't It wasn't too far from Cancun, but it was a resort. Oh, Riviera Maya, I believe. So, and it was, a, I don't know, four-day event, something like that. And to get away for four days and, you know, I just was, I was just busy working at the time. But in any event, I met with the uh, organizers of the event and I flat out asked them, I said, should I come down to this thing? Who who should I want to meet? And so on and so forth. And they told me about this Justin Legere and the fact that what he was known for at this time was the first person to sell more than a million dollars in a single day on Amazon and eventually more than 10 million in a month, which nowadays isn't all that impressive. But back then, this would have been May 2017. Back then, you know, it was pretty interesting. And so out of sheer curiosity, I decided to go and listen to this guy and see what he had to say. And I'm telling you, my uh, when he hit the stage and he started telling his jokes and his stories and telling us how he ran his business and did certain things, my radar was up a bit. And I really had no intentions of doing any business with this guy. But after he was done with his spiel, I kind of understood that what he was, was 
really a manufacturer of a bunch of, uh, he had like pool floats and holiday accoutrements and whatnot, uh, Halloween costumes and different things for different seasons. He was big with seasonality, but mostly uh, summer was his big thing, his pool floats. And so he had made this decision to change his business model from just selling himself on Amazon to becoming a manufacturer slash distributor. So what a, we all know a manufacturer is the one that makes the product. So he was coming up with these products and having them made in China, brought into the United States to his warehouse, and he then decided to become a distributor. Now, later on, I learned a couple of reasons about why this happened. And there's some big stories out there. You can just search the Reddit forums if you're even interested, you know, about how he lost his Amazon account. He lost his selling privileges. And I actually had some phone calls with him. He would never talk about this through messaging or email. It was always had to be on the phone. And I never recorded any of my calls with Justin. But he was basically telling me how he was manipulating search results and everything to to sell Various different products, he'd get one product ranked really high and then he'd swap it out for another product. And I mean, the guy really knew the black hat world of manipulating sales on Amazon. And and I think from what I read, and this is, I guess would be speculation because I don't remember for sure. I'm pretty sure that's how and why he lost his selling privileges on Amazon. Well, he was making a lot of money, a lot of money on Amazon. So I think he made the decision to to switch to this distributor mode. But he did it in what I thought at the time was in a brilliant way. And here was what he was doing. He was literally saying, look, I am going to give you exclusivity on my branded products and, you know, sell to you wholesale and let you be the sole seller exclusivity of this product and you'll make a lot of money. Now, if you think about that, that's actually pretty smart from a distributor point of view, that for whatever reason doesn't want to sell on Amazon, right? Sell to one person, keep them in stock, and the product should increase in sales as time goes on just through organic results and things like that. So long story short, I ended up sending him somewhere north of a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, Originally, I was, you know, here I was. (laughs) I've told people this so many times. Hey, don't go all in. Don't don't put all the money on the table. Just put in a little and test things, especially with a product. You want to buy, you want to test a new product? You buy a little bit of it, send it in, see what happens. And then based on real life results, you can go all in on a product. Well, why didn't I do that with Justin? (laughs) Because I even, when I was at this event in Mexico, I overheard people saying things like, yeah, you know, I don't know if he's real trustworthy. And yeah, maybe a couple of people have been burned by him in the past. And even one of the organizers of the event said to me, yeah, he's kind of unpredictable. We're not even, (laughs) we're not even sure he's going to show up to this event. And I'm thinking, okay, do I really want to have anything to do with this guy? But I went to a good friend of mine who, I'm going to leave her name out of it, who was also a speaker at the event and was a friend of mine. And I went up to her and I said, hey, you know this guy, right? This Justin Legere. And she said, yeah. I said, what do you think about him? I'm hearing that some people might have gotten screwed over by him. And she said, well, from what I know, the best I can tell you is if he did screw anybody over, he made it right. Now, I should have really, really heard and read between the lines and understood what was being said there. But I didn't. I just kind of heard, well, he made it right. And things happen in business. I've been given second chances, third chances by some people. I've given a lot of second chances myself. Things happen. You can't hold something against somebody your entire life. They make a mistake, right? So I figure, well, okay, he made it. Because especially if you make it right, you make it right. That goes a long way in my book. So I, I went up that night, you know, the big hangout was at the at the bar, but he getting lubricated pretty good and doing the networking thing. And I was talking to Justin and he gave me a little bit more insight into his whole business model and then asked me if I was interested in buying any of his products. And I said, yeah, I'll tell you what, let's test this out with, I think at the time I said a hundred grand. Well, uh, this was actually before. I had spoken to my friend to get a little bit more insight. And after I'd spoken to Justin and said, yeah, let's start with a hundred grand. I went back and talked to my friend again. And afterwards I ended up uh, sending, I think an email, I think after the, after the event was over to Justin saying, you know what? I'm just going to send in 25 and see how it goes. And I understand my friend contacted me. and I understand Justin was like really mad 
at her because he's like, you know, I had this guy putting in a hundred grand and now he talks to you all of a sudden it's 25 and blah, 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 blah. And I thought about, you know, what she, you know, she, she relayed this to me and I go, yeah, it's not right. I guess I, I'll go ahead and out of just sheer stupidity, like I said, sent him, maybe it was around 265,000, something like that. You know, just wired it, wired it on over. He was, I think, in Arizona at the time. And the whole way it was going to work is Justin would pick the products that would go down to my Amazon Seller Central account. I gave him complete leeway uh, to give me exclusivity on whatever product he thought that I should be selling that would sell good at that time. You know, obviously, you're not going to send Halloween. You're not going to send the vampire blood down in in June or July and we wanted to do all of the summer stuff right before you know and end up finishing right around the the 4th of July because he said that was the best way to do it so that's why I finally decided to instead of sending just down 25 grand I'd send a quarter of a million or so and because we were on a bit of a seasonal timeline and the thinking was well if he can you know 3x this money or whatever however whatever it's going to look like profit wise then we'd have that much more to go for Halloween which would my understanding would be the real big the real big season. And I only I had only kind of dabbled in Halloween stuff up to that point. But what I did dabble with went well. So I knew if I could get together with somebody like Justin that really understood the seasonality of uh, Halloween and what to buy and when to send it down. You know, I really thought I was doing or dealing with, with an expert, with somebody that understood how Amazon worked in these different holiday seasons. And he had already manufactured all of the products that were selling super well. The big reason he gave me for not just selling all of this on Amazon himself was cash flow. He basically said, I had to pay for all of these products to be made in China. Now they're all sitting in my warehouse and I'm holding all of this merchandise and, you know, basically a little cash tight. So what I'm willing to do is to sell to you now and get that money and then I can afford to load up for the Christmas season and whatnot. Makes a lot of sense. I mean, everything, what's really sad about this whole thing is everything he said made perfect sense. And I remember thinking to myself a couple of times, well, if I was going to do this myself as a manufacturer slash distributor, this is exactly how I would do it because it spreads the risk around. You're still making money off the powerhouse Amazon platform. And if you want to keep a few products for yourself, exclusivity for yourself, you can still do that. You're not saying every single product you're going to give other people exclusivity. So what could possibly go wrong? Well, a lot. It turns out I experienced actually a few things that were unfortunate. The first is that a lot of the products that he sent down were not well-tested, well-known great sellers. They were friggin' crapshoots. I was the guinea pig, if you will. Now, here's what, what makes that even worse. He gave the same speech to a lot of other people. So I'm, I don't have exclusivity on anything, Nothing. Basically, he would send a shipment of, let's say, a pizza slice pool floats, right? A big pool float in the, in the shape of, of a pizza that looks like a slice of pepperoni pizza. You've seen these before. He would send a bunch down to Amazon. Some for me, some for this other guy, some for that guy, some for them. I mean, there were literally 10 to 20 sellers on these products. Now, I think... What Justin was kind of hoping for was super high velocity, buy box rotation between all of these competitive sellers and everybody would eventually sell out, but just at a slower rate if they were the only seller. If if you had one exclusive seller, he would sell out 20 times faster than if you have 20 sellers dividing up that pie. So I wasn't super upset about that initially until I saw that somebody was coming in and cutting prices all the time. You know, Justin had his map pricing. The only place you can get those products, theoretically, are from Justin. Yet I would see this strange, same account, same seller account come in every now and then and and do what I would call a hit and run. They would go in there and siphon 10,000 of sales off of that one and 20,000 in sales off of another product and just bounce around between all of these products, not for the long term, just long enough to get a lot of sales. And then they'd come off of that product. And I'm like, who 
the heck is this seller account? Well, eventually, I came to find out it was an account controlled by Justin. So literally, the guy that's saying, you can have exclusivity, and I'm not going to be you know, selling on Amazon. I'm just the manufacturer, the distributor. You'll never, you'll never see me on any product that I've sold to you was nonsense. An out and out and out lie, basically. Whenever Justin needed some money, and this is all, some of this is learned after the fact. Whenever Justin needed some money, cash flow was a little tight. He fired up this mystery account. I don't know who it was owned by. I, I could speculate, but I won't. And, but he controlled it. And he went in there and he wrecked havoc. And he, he in fact, took sales away from myself and anybody else he sold these products to. That was that was bad enough. But what really, really got me was the fact that he was putting me on products that had no little to no sales history. So he had, in essence, gone to China and made a new product, you know, maybe a, a unicorn float. Let's say he'd never sold a unicorn float, which I think he did, but it's an example. So he'd go to China, he goes, make me a unicorn float. And then he would go launch it on Amazon, but sell you. <laughs> You're the one. He's launching it on. It's not him going out there and seasoning the listing and putting some PPC out there or getting giving some away and getting reviews, which people were doing back then. It was him literally putting you into $10,000 of a complete unknown product. And then when it didn't sell, you'd go back to him and say, Justin, this didn't sell. What the heck, man? What are we going to do? Yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. Every now and then he would give you what he called credit. He would give you credit for that. Well, you know, I sold you X number of these and yeah, they didn't do very well and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to give you some credit and get you some something else down there. And so <laughs> it became one of these situations where you went from one bad product to another bad product to another bad product and just started to lose money. And after, you know, I gave him a bunch of chances. I would, I'm a numbers guy. I would send him the numbers and I'm like, Justin, this just doesn't look great at all. This actually looks really, really bad. And what's with the 20 other sellers? And rah, 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 rah. You know, he always had an answer. But the worst part about dealing with, with Justin, I mean, there were a lot of worst parts. But w- believe it or not, when I did talk to him on the phone, first of all, he has this gravelly voice voice that even when you're standing right next to him in a quiet room, you can barely understand what he's saying. And I don't, I think he would purposefully, (laughs) this is, this is just me being silly. He would go out and he would buy the worst freaking phone, a cell phone, you know, that was out there on the market. He would do research and say, you know, what cell phone can I buy to where I can almost sound, I'll be like indecipherable. <laughs> and I don't know the, the reason behind that. I'm, like I said, I'm being a little silly. But if you ever got on a phone call with this guy, wow. And matter of fact, I'll play more of that call. <laughs> matter of fact, let's let's listen to this again because this this just blows my mind. Just take let's take another listen. Come out to LA. And I'll effing kill you. So yeah, he had a home in LA. I think he had one in New York too. And he kind of just went around. The dude had a lot of money at one point. By the way, the background, I should really play the whole call. I think I will in a little bit or all I have of it anyway. The background on that is the person that recorded this call, the other party to this call, basically thought he had an exclusive arrangement on a product. Matter of fact, I think he thought, I think he was under the impression he owned the product. And again, I would have to do a lot of digging to get 100% clear on that particular situation. But the whole reason for this call was this particular person felt, let's call him Mike. Mike felt that Justin was ripping him off and Justin had broken a lot of promises and Mike had lost a lot of money because of what Justin was doing to his business, he felt he was holding one of his best selling products hostage. And so he tried to negotiate a settlement with Justin. Justin was going to sign some kind of contract that was going to help this guy move forward with some closure, right? Give him, make him whole to a certain extent, but just Justin would get out of his life. And while that kind of went south on this call and degraded into, into these threats. Okay. So let's fast forward just a little bit and I'm just, this isn't so important. So I'm just going to give you a bit of a summary. I ended up suing Justin in, in federal court in Arizona because I said to him, this is terrible. What is going on here is not what you said it was. I'm losing money. And at the time he was holding, I can't remember. I want to say it was down to like 180,000. He had sent in some. I was holding like 180,000 or something like that. And I said, just send me my money back. I'm just done with this craziness. Just just wire the money back that you haven't spent on product. I'll eat 
the rest because I'm a big boy and I'll just move on. But just send me back, you know, what I'd sent you. And he said, no. He basically said, no refunds. I said, wait a minute. (laughs) You haven't bought anything for that money yet. (laughs) What do you mean, no refunds? I'm laughing now, but back then I was, it was like, I was befuddled. How does somebody say, no, I'm going to keep uh, this 180000 even though I uh, haven't sold you anything yet? It's just stupid. Just right then and there, I knew. I said, wow, I'm dealing with just a real terrible person here. <laughs> and, uh, now, if I had signed a contract with him, because I've done this before in some of the programs I'm, I'm running, it's like, hey, if you want me to buy you some products or whatever, and you put some money with me, Understand that money, that money's gone because I'm budgeting and this and that and whatnot. So only put in what, what you want me to spend on products or whatever. And they know it's, it's a non-refundable. It goes from being money into turning into credits for products. And it's well understood and there's a contract signed. We didn't have that with Justin. That's another big mistake I made is I didn't get anything in writing. So when I wired him that quarter of a million dollars, he basically smiled and said, that's mine. All that money is mine now. And I had no recourse to get it back except to file in federal court. Well, this time his company was called uh, Kangaroo Manufacturing. And through the course of, of the lawsuit, I eventually got a judgment. By the time we got to that point, he, he was let, telling the judge, I'm broke, or that he's broke, right? I'm broke. I can't afford to pay Todd anything. And I need a payment plan and, you know, I'm broke. And the judge, it's funny, during the pretrial conference, when I actually just got to sit with the judge, talk to the judge and explain my side, she literally, and she was the nicest judge ever. She literally said to me, I, I've met a lot of people like this. I've seen a lot of people come through my courtroom. He's not going to pay you, you know, or he'll just as soon go bankrupt. He said, so she said, so if you go to trial, you'll probably win, but I'm telling you right now, anything you can get from this guy to minimize your loss, you should do it. And that's a pretty hard pill to swallow coming from a federal judge. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, wow, this is like my mom talking to me. <laughs> you know? Son, just cut your loss and move on because this guy is a deadbeat. I listened to the judge and made the decision right then and there that, okay, you know, I'm, I'm done with this guy. I'll, I'll, enter into this payment arrangement he wants he'll he'll pay me he'll pay me he'll pay me off and that'll be it and we did sign this was huge with him through this entire process it it even came up before we started negotiating was he was big on confidentiality he was like i can't i don't want you talking about this to anybody ever la 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 but and, and i signed it was part of the the settlement agreement but he broke the settlement agreement by not paying me and so so the settlement agreement's all null and void, you know, any confidentiality that he was assured is, is out the window when he didn't pay me. So that's why I'm talking about this right now, because basically of what, what's happening to the guy we're calling Mike with the death threat, because Mike's not the only guy Justin <laughs> threatened to kill. I'm not, I'm, you guys can assume that Justin ever, th- ever threatened to kill me. I'm not going to say, all right, but he sure threatened to kill this guy. Listen. Yeah, come out to LA. I'll laugh and kill you. So anyway, that's not the death threat that got Justin in trouble. Justin ended up threatening somebody else. And you know how sometimes you just threaten to kill the wrong guy? (laughs) He kind of made that mistake. Now, what's really interesting, ah, you may not find this interesting, I find this interesting, is that I was at a party. I was at a cocktail party in Las Vegas, and I'm at this party, and I see this guy, and he's got this shirt on. It didn't say, it didn't say kangaroo manufacturing, but it was another, and again, I'm not going to mention it, but it was another jungle animal manufacturing (laughs) jokingly and i didn't know this guy i was standing there you know someone out someone had noticed that i was there motioned me over was introducing me to people and i see this guy's shirt and i asked them i said that that doesn't have anything to do with kangaroo manufacturing does it and a few people that were like standing there kind of you could see him kind of turn white everybody out really quiet and then this guy introduced himself to me and it just so happens that this was the guy that justin threatened to kill and not not just threatened to kill he actually attempted to hire somebody to have him killed so there's a lot going on right there and so he basically started to tell me a bit of the story and there was this other individual that was working 
I thought with Justin at the time, but it was more like he was working for. And again, I'm not going to mention his, his name either. But I said to the group of people standing there, well, what about this scumbag so-and-so? <laughs> One of the guys standing in the group says, well, that's, that's my cousin. <laughs> and by the way, he's standing right behind you. <laughs> So I slowly turn around and you ever see those scenes in the movie where the little guy starts to look up and then up and up more to try to make eye contact with the giant standing in front of him? That was how that kind of went. This guy was huge. So he he said, who are you? And I, th- I gave him my name. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got screwed. You got screwed bad. And we sat down and we talked. And it turns out this guy, this guy got taken advantage of by Justin also. And it was it was the one of the weirder nights of my life to be confronted again, if you will, <laughs> with this past that I thought like was way behind me, way behind me. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot that night and exchanged contact information with, you know, the gentleman, his, his name, I guess I can release his name because he was, I mean, he's part of the public record and what's going on and what I'm talking about. His name was Joshua or Josh Tisher. So all of this is, you know, Legere is, you know, he's like, he closed Kangaroo. Then he opened up something else called Cheyenne. It was Cheyenne Brands or something like that. A little bit down the road, all of the inventory disappeared, right? But all of a sudden, it appears at Cheyenne. That appears to be what happened. And this this Josh was getting screwed out of a lot of money. And there's, I mean, there are public lawsuits back and forth between these guys. Because whenever you sue Justin, apparently he just turns around and counter sues you. Also, usually for defamation, it, it's just nuts. Josh went to the Mesa Police Department and he filed a report with the police department saying that Legere had offered to hire a former employee to attack Joshua and another business associate, uh, John Burns. And it was in connection to a separate lawsuit with, with Cheyenne Brands in the amount of roughly $2 million. So if you ever wonder, you know, is there a number... <laughs> A financial number that would cause somebody to turn to, oh, it'd be cheaper to kill them. In this case, apparently it was $2 million. Right? Now, in the in this criminal case, recorded phone calls and text message records played a, a key role in the entire investigation, according to the court documents that I read. And one such call between Legere and Josh Tischer was described by a, a Mesa... Mesa City Detective O'Sullivan, and he heard Legere make comments about murder. And this is what was said. This is a quote from the, the court records. Quote, you must have factored the possibility that I can commit murder, right? Like you thought of that, right? You know, Legere, this is Legere asking Tisher. You know, he also commented to Tisher about his anger towards Burns, John Burns, stating that another possibility is, quote, I lose it tonight. There is a possibility I take a bat to his head, to his skull. That's a possibility. Doesn't he understand that possibility? You know, in in that same phone call, that same recorded call, Legere goes on to say to Tisher, you stole my company and I'm going to try to get it back legally. And the very last straw, if I can't get it back legally, you will see me snap and things will happen. He added that, quote, bad people things will happen to people. That's all I can say, okay? End quote. Bad people things will happen to people. Yeah, not the most eloquent statement, but in a different, in a different recorded call, you know, with another business associate, LeJerry made several comments about his willingness to commit murder suicide if the business dispute was not resolved in his favor. Now, when people think like that, don't you just say, well, just kill yourself. (laughs) Don't you wish they just go with the suicide part and not the murder suicide part? I mean, come on. Anyway, another quote from all of this mess is quote from this is from Justin now quote, you will have the most unbelievable trauma and sadness in your life that you effed effed with me, effed beep with me. End quote. Now, Jerry says, I'm, I'm willing to murder myself 
and you. Do you understand that? Do you understand the concept that I'm willing to kill you to not let this happen? Wow. Another key piece of evidence is a phone call that detectives recorded on March 19th, 2021. And this was between Legere and and Eric Ivanov. Now, Ivanov used to work for Legere. And Ivanov claimed that Legere called him the night before wanting Burns and Tischer killed that same night. But Ivanov put him off. To his credit, he put him off. But when Ivanov and Legere talked the next day by phone, Detective O'Sullivan was listening in. And the police report makes note that Legere makes several more comments about his interest in having Burns and Tischer assaulted. And he's willing to pay Ivanov for doing, quote, the job, end quote. He goes on to say, this part is just, I mean, this is like a sad, sad peek into this dude's mind. But here's a quote uh, from Justin. Quote, I don't want to kill anybody. I'd love to see you know a, a broken jaw, a broken rib, or whatever. I would pay for that. You know what I mean? This is what Legere told Ivanov. And he goes on to say, I'm just trying to make the point that don't F with me. You know what I mean? Wow. Wow. I mean, that's, <laughs> what can you say about somebody that thinks this is how you do business? This has, you know, this is crazy. We're talking about an Amazon seller here, right? Somebody that, that bought pool floats from China and tried to sell them online. This is who we're dealing with. In any event, on March 24th, 2021, investigators spoke with Burns, who reported he too had been threatened by Legere a week earlier. And in one text message, Legere wrote, quote, feel like digging up cemetery plots right now. And another quote, you warred with the wrong man, Johnny Boy. Well, Burns shared a recorded conversation between Legere and yet another business associate who Legere purportedly threatened in the past. And in that call, Legere describes a scenario where he will, quote, put a gun in John Burns' mouth. That is a choice I will make, end quote. If he fails, you know, if Justin fails at regaining control of his company's assets. Now, what's interesting is Justin filed for bankruptcy. And I'm trying to remember if if Kangaroo actually filed. I think they did. But I know Justin filed for bankruptcy. So now here's a guy that's literally wanting to get out of all of the debts that he owes everybody, including me. He owed me a lot of money at that time because he never paid on the settlement, uh, the court judgment I have against them. So he's involved in, in this bankruptcy and he's out here basically threatening to kill people. He, he even at one point compared himself. Matter of fact, I'll give you the quote. It's where he's comparing himself to the Godfather he, or actually Michael. He says, quote, I feel like Michael Corleone at the end of the Godfather. I'm just cleaning up everything, end quote. So yeah, he got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> and he was taken into custody in California on, on an arrest warrant out of Mesa, Arizona. He waived uh, extradition and so was uh, transferred to the Maricopa County Jail in June of last year, June 2021. They had a $50,000 bond to secure his pretrial release, but he was required to stay in Arizona. Eventually, uh, he secured a court order to move back to California, and it was subject to electronic monitoring. His release conditions and alleged noncompliance with such were the subject of uh, several hearings. I was going through these online. You can purchase transcripts. Some of these documents you can just download. And the gist of it is eventually the judge hearing this case, a Judge Minder in Arizona, revoked Legere's permission to reside in California. He basically said, look, there's been a change in circumstances here, and they're due to you, Legere, not having followed the release terms that I set. And what it looks like what happened was that Legere traveled to Las Vegas from California to take part in the 2021 World Series of Poker. And I'm pretty sure the judge, yeah, wouldn't be happy with that, right? Then later on, that was in October. So then in November, the judge did grant Legere's renewed request to live in California. But man, the prosecutor, not happy with that. Objection, objection, objection. But the judge let him live in California again. So where are we at with this right now? Well, March 24th, 
Legere entered a guilty plea. A week earlier, he posted about his case on change.org addressing the criminal charges and describing what he says led to his quote-unquote emotional outburst. He's claiming basically that this business dispute that he was inv- involved in over his, his company that when he basically shuttered Kangaroo and magically started Cheyenne Brands with all the ex- you know same inventory, that business dispute led to his emotional outburst. Well, that emotional outburst sounds just like doesn't it sound, I mean, like this emotional outburst? That had nothing to do with it either of these guys <laughs> or the business dispute over Cheyenne Brands. So he must have had a lot of little emotional outbursts, but there you go. And according to the Jerry, you know, like when COVID-19 hit, his chief financial officer, quote, politely urged me to lay everyone off and keep my last couple million dollars until we knew what was going on with the world, end quote. Instead, Legere says that he put, quote, the last of my personal money into my company with zero sales, end quote. Because he didn't want to be he, he, what he termed the guy to put employees out of work during a pandemic. Now, <laughs> the Justin Legere that I know would put his mother out of work during a pandemic. But, you know, he claims then that by... You know, this this act of uh, sainthood of his to basically spend the last couple of millions of dollars on his employees during the pandemic with no sales. You know, that he got repaid by some of these employees because they robbed his company. And I guess he's he was referring to, you know, the two guys he tried to have killed. So, you know, he alleged, you know, that these guys emptied his warehouse, embezzled company revenue. And boy, that's got to be a whole nother story. <laughs> OK, but I, we may never hear that story because when Justin pled guilty to this crime, all of the lawsuits that he filed on behalf of Cheyenne Brands against Burns, Tisher, and all the others, all of a sudden they're on the dismissal calendar. They're going to go bye-bye. Pretty much what happened with the when I sued him and he did this countersuit for defamation, that's just, that went bye-bye too. <laughs> you know? All right. So out of all of these charges, I think there were six charges, I think four of them, Four, four or so got reduced, or I'm not reduced, got dismissed uh, by the grand jury. But, you know, the, the ones that stuck around, I think the one, it was a stalking charge. He did he did end up pleading guilty to that. And so just kind of wondering what's going what's gonna to happen next. I mean, this was back, when did he plead guilty? I think I just said that, but it would have been not that long ago. It was like March, I want to say. Pled guilty in March. And his sentencing has been changed a couple of times because of schedule conflicts or, you know, or anything like that. And so I believe right now it's scheduled for next week, I want to say, that he's going to get the actual sentence. And I have I have his plea agreement right here. What's interesting on the plea agreement is he, let's see, he pled guilty to attempt to commit stalking a class six designated felony. And he agreed. Yeah, I did that. And so that count carries what they call a presumptive sentence of one year in prison. Presumptive. So basically, hey, they're telling Justin, when you when you sign this document, you, you should just assume you're going to get a year. The minimum he could get, I mean, the judge has discretion, obviously, right? The judge is the one that's going to decide. The minimum sentence he can get is four months four months. A mitigated sentence would be six months. And then there's a maximum potential sentence of a year and a half. Now, if the judge finds an aggravated situation, he can give him a sentence of uh, two years. So Justin's a gambling guy. I wonder where he's, wonder what he's placing his money on here. I guess probation is also available, but I'm kind of, you know, I'm thinking if there was ever a time for somebody to, to learn a lesson and spend time in in jail or prison. It's it's Justin. And Justin, this is this is your time. Personally, I I never want to wish misfortune on anybody, but you've kind of earned this misfortune not only through the dealings I had with you, but the dealings you've had through a lot of people and all of the people that lost money dealing with you that never got to go to court, that never got a detective to file a criminal charge and who never got to see you stand up and plead guilty to attempt to commit stalking, a felony. 
So I'd like to see you get the year. If I was a betting man, I'd bet money, though, that it'll probably be less than that. Our prisons are crowded. I just I just hope Justin learns his lesson. And there's so much more I could say about this. I know I promised that I was going to play the uh, the entire phone call for you. And I think I will. Some of it's very hard to hear, but you'll get you'll get a just a little more look into uh, what this guy is like. So let me I'm going to go ahead and play that, and then I'll be right back. This is going to be great. Let me sit down. You're going to like this, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, you're going to like it. Would you agree that everything has a better Okay, first of, of all, first of all, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. You're, you're all muffled. Give me a minute. Give me a minute, okay? Give me a minute. I'm going to a good place. Are you um, in, in life? Oh, you're not starting a war with me, really? I know. I'm just trying to kill you. So you're you're using the one little piece of ammunition that you think that you have, which is the office ammunition. page, and that's not war. You don't think that's no, war, huh? No, you start. No, I'm saying now I am. I'm saying when I think the when you started being war, I was basically telling you that I I have nine grand that are three months, I still can't hear you. I can't hear what you're saying. What I'm saying is, is that I have nine grams, right? You know what they are, correct? I'm not. You, you, know? you, you have nine what? Brands. Brands. You heard of my nine brands, right? Did you say brand? Yeah, brand. Okay, brand. I, I, I can barely hear you. Yes, brands. Okay, okay. you have nine brands. Yes, there is. No way was your star invention. I, 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 I'm in the process of signing a deal. Right, which gives me, I'm in the process of signing a deal, which, which will give me five to eight million dollars in, in borrowed, and everything will be put up on my company, right? And basically all my brands and everything else. Finally, That's I can right. hear you. Don't move. I can finally hear you. Okay. So when I told you that, and you were telling me, okay, at the end of the day, he said, I'm not starting to fight with you. I just want to let you know that in life, there's one thing you can be sure of, right? Is that everything has a cost versus you know, a reward versus cost, right? So, for example, you might say to me, hey, Justin, this is what I want, and if you don't do it, this is what I'm going to do, right? So now I have to weigh, hmm, do I want to be friends with Mike? Do I want to have Mike as an ally? Do I want to have Mike as an enemy, right? And I have to decide, right? Because there's a benefit of both, right? There's a benefit of having Mike as an ally, so that was harassing. There's a benefit of kicking off the page. I can make more money, right? So I have to compare the two and make a decision, right? So I want you to compare, right? You're cutting out again. I said, so far, I've done, I've done everything I want. I've sold you most of my products. I've, I've delivered it to you on the end, I promise. I'm letting you sell this stuff exclusively. Now, Wait a minute, I that's not you. true. Yeah, that's a lie. You're not letting me sell them exclusively. You're on the f***ing page. Well, if you want to buy them at my, my, my cost I want, that's fine. I have no problem with that. Well, you talk well, about you, that, but... your cost is, is, is inflated. Even the $4 that I just paid for these 11000 are, are are inflated. The only reason I agreed to do inflated. that was because you're going to be signing a contract getting out of my life. That's it. Well, I'm not signing any contract, but here's what I want to throw at you, okay? Well, there you go. So that, once again, you've lied and uh, cost me $1,000. You don't think I'm going to come after you for that? Okay, listen, Michael. At the end of the day, the benefit of you posting on my Instagram, what is the benefit? What do you get out of it? You get five seconds before I block it. What do I get out of blocking you on the page? I get all the money and you, you get a hundred thousand dollars. Like now, if you think if, if you think that's a good trade for you, right? Then you get one little comment on my Facebook because I'm being honest. If you put on Facebook, hey Justin, that's it. Not even a mean comment, but one word on my Facebook, my Instagram, my Twitter, hey, one word. I'm kicking you off and Suzanne off the product forever. Okay, now, if you want to do that, if that's what you want to do, you'll get that much gratification. That'll be so fun. Your comment will be on my social media for 10 seconds before I catch it. This one, this one will, yeah. You'll, you'll block that one. 
What are you going to do? What are you gonna, What are you going to do with the next one and the one after that and the one after that? What are you going to do? What are you going to do when I get the automated list of everybody that is your followers? Where you have a million followers beyond the one thousand that you have right now, and I send them that fucking email that I'm going to craft. What are you going to do about that? That's going to fucking crush you, you idiot. You will fucking be crushed. And, and if that doesn't work, I'll find another way to do it. I swear to. God, I will I mean, not I mean, rest I'm until you are crushed. Put a bullet in your head because I'm just sick of you. I was that Dutch. I don't That's fine. That we can go that route too if you want. If you want to what play, if you want to play in that in that gutter, we can I'll both play in that fucking gutter. Dead. You're dead. You're dead. Let's call on tough guys. Stop being your social media. Come out to fucking LA. I'll kill you. Put you in the fucking ground where you belong. You piece of shit. Yep. Tucker, Bring do it. one comment on my Instagram and you're done forever. You'll never have. You. I'm putting it on right. Now, I'll take you off. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's that's not how a businessman <laughs> conducts business. Let me let me tell you that. But apparently, Justin was you know okay with with literally saying, "Hey, you need to decide. Is it worth it to be my my enemy? And I have to decide. Do I want you as a friend, or do I just screw you over and take all of the money? And you know, because you are going to put something on my social media. That's that's who I got to deal with with uh, my quarter of a million dollar uh, purchase with Kangaroo. All right, so you got to be careful out there, everybody. You got to be so careful. I don't know what more I could have done to avoid this other than just had my eyes a little more open, tested the waters with a smaller amount of money and tried to really, really verify what this guy was, was telling me. And I didn't do it. I I just literally, I don't know, if I'd have had less money overall, right? I mean, from a ratio standpoint, I kind of figured, well, I'm not risking everything. I'm just it's a small percentage of the cash I'd laying around and I just kind of minimize the risk. And that was my mistake. So never minimize the risk. And we're going to wrap this up right now. Next week is when, when Justin gets sentenced and then I will continue to follow what happens to Justin when he gets out. And again, I don't wish him ill will. I hope he learns from this. Everybody's entitled to second and sometimes third chances. Luckily, nobody actually got hurt in this scenario. But obviously, when he got arrested, the police felt that what he had done was illegal and there was a potentiality that somebody could have got hurt. So I hope Justin learns from this. I hope whatever time, if he does get uh, some jail time, he uses it to reflect on how he ended up there. And just not stew like some people do and come out come out worse for wear. Make most of the most of that time, Justin. You know, I'm rooting for you to turn your life around, to do business in an ethical, legal manner. And I hope ten years from now you're a huge success. You're swimming in money because you did it the right way. All right, everybody, go out there, do something every single day to move yourself toward your goals. And I hope that you learned something from today and that you tune in next time. Take care, everybody.